Hi, I'm Mark. This is Mark's Tech Vlogs on YouTube, and today I'm going to bring you a fitness review of the Apple Watch Series 3. Now for a few years I've been a Fitbit user, and the reason I've been a Fitbit user is because I primarily wanted a device that would track my fitness. Now if I'm honest, the Fitbit Ionic on paper looks really good, but in practice it's actually really disappointing because it isn't really that smart. And so I decided to take the plunge and pick up an Apple Watch Series 3. I've had the Apple Watch for a couple of weeks now, and so I thought I'd bring you guys a review focusing on how good it is as a fitness tracker as well as being a smartwatch. Now because I wanted to focus on fitness as well as the general features of the watch, this video is probably going to be quite long, but do stick with it and I hope it'll help you guys out if you're trying to decide whether you can use Apple Watch for fitness or not. Let's start by talking price. If we're doing a straight up comparison of the Fitbit Ionic and the Apple Watch Series 3, the Ionic comes in at £300 and the Apple Watch Series 3 starts at £329 for the GPS model. This is a model that doesn't have LTE built in, so you can't make phone calls directly from it unless your phone is near you. However, unless you desperately want to go out for an entire day without your phone, this version of the Apple Watch is probably going to be fine for most users. That £329 starting point is for the 38mm model of the Apple Watch with a silicon sports band. So let's talk about hardware on the device. The Apple Watch Series 3 has built-in GPS. This means you can track your runs when you're out and about without having your phone with you. It also finally has an altimeter. This is great if you want to track the amount of stairs climbed and elevation. This is something new for the Series 3. Of course, as we come to expect from smartwatches and fitness devices, it also has an optical heart rate sensor. The Apple Watch is also water resistant by up to 50 metres. This is great for swimming in the ocean, but also in pools. I'll talk more about the water resistance and tracking swims later on. It also has a built-in accelerometer and gyrometer. This means it can track your steps, distance travelled, and all the kind of things that you want if you're tracking fitness. When it comes to memory, the Apple Watch Series 3 comes with 8GB built-in memory. This doesn't sound like a lot, but when it comes to apps and having a little bit of music on, it's probably about right. When it comes to picking up the Apple Watch, you've got a variety of choices. Of course, you can go for the Series 3 with GPS, but you can also choose the LTE version. You've also got a choice of sizes, so you can go for the 38mm or the 42mm. Personally, because I've got kind of medium-sized wrists, I went for the 38mm, and I think that was the right decision for my wrist size. You also have a choice of colours for the watch itself, but also a huge variety of straps to choose from. Of course, you can change these straps out, so you don't have to stick with the one strap you choose when you first buy it. The straps are really easy to change out with a simple slide mechanism. There's also tons of third-party straps out there if you want to pick up an additional one for your watch. Continuing with the hardware inside, you've got built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. This means it can connect to a network using your phone, but it also means you can connect different devices to it, such as headphones for listening to music. The Apple Watch also remains connected when you're out and about, just by being connected to your phone via Bluetooth. It's also worth noting at this point that the Apple Watch only works with iPhones. One of the other really nice options when it comes to Bluetooth is that you can use Bluetooth to pair an external heart rate monitor. This means if you're the sort of person who likes working out with a chest strap on to get kind of more accurate readings during weightlifting and things like that, then you can do that and you can pair that with your Apple Watch. Just make sure before you buy one you check that it is compatible. The main letdown of the Apple Watch is battery life. Apple claim you can get 18 hours from it. Most people seem to find you can get about two days. Personally, I found about a day and a half with kind of moderate usage is about right. Of course, if you use things like the GPS to track runs and you make lots of phone calls from it, then actually you're gonna find you get less out of that battery. Next, let's talk about the screen. The Apple Watch has a beautiful 1000 nit screen. This means that the screen is really bright, you can see it in all different kinds of lighting settings, and it also looks incredibly crisp and clear. It also has a force touch display. I found that this display is really responsive, and even if you've got slightly sweaty fingers, it still seems to work fine. The other thing to note is that it's got a really tough screen. Apple have made it of Ion X strengthened glass. This means it should resist kind of scratches and cracks quite easily. You can get screen protectors for it, but I haven't yet for mine. If you look around on YouTube, you can see all sorts of videos where people have tried to scratch it with knives and graters, and it's come out just fine. However, maybe don't try that at home with your own one. Continuing with hardware, it's also got Siri built in. This means that it's got a microphone and a speaker so you can get voice feedback. You can use Siri to ask questions, to reply to messages, and do all sorts of other things. This built in microphone and speaker mean that even if you've just got the GPS version, you can still answer calls and make calls from your device. This happens by your iPhone piggybacking the call to your watch. The final thing to note in hardware is it's got a taptic engine inside. This means it vibrates to give you notifications and to alert you and can set alarms and all sorts of things. Next, let's talk about design. On one side of the Apple Watch, you'll find a speaker. The other side has a button and the digital crown. It's got a slightly rectangular design, although it probably looks a bit more square a lot of the time. 
It's not too chunky and it's got curved edges on the screen. This means it looks really good on your wrist. As I've already said, the straps can be changed and you can customise those with whatever you like. It's also worth noting that the charger that comes with it is a magnetic charger. This simply clips onto the back of the watch where the heart rate sensor is and charges via USB. I found to start with this charger was a little bit tricky just to get it clipped on right and make sure it didn't fall off, but actually once you get used to it, it's really easy to use. Next up, let's talk about usability and fitness tracking with this device. The Apple Watch, as you'd expect with Apple, has got a really simple to use and intuitive looking operating system. It's fairly easy to navigate your way through. The main screen lets you scroll to the left or the right for different watch faces. Uh, you can also customise on these faces different information and add shortcuts. Pulling down from the top shows you notifications and a hard press lets you clear all of those. Pulling up from the bottom shows you battery life, aeroplane mode, lets you ping your phone if you've lost it, uh, use the screen on the watch as a torch, switch on do not display or theatre modes, uh, switch it into waterproof mode, mute it and choose airplay options. Pressing the crown from a watch screen brings up the app grid. You can show this as the kind of grid that you can see in front of you or if you hard press you can choose the list view. You can also reorder these apps if you'd like to. Turning the crown while you're in this mode either lets you scroll through the apps or zoom in and out. To load an app you simply press it. The other button on the side is also really useful. A single tap of it lets you view either favourite or most recent apps. You can choose which of these you want to see from the Apple Watch app. But for now let's talk about the fitness capabilities of this device. Let's start with the Activity app. The Activity app is the main app on the watch for tracking your activity. It can mirror the data to the Activity app on your phone as well. In the Activity app you have three rings which you try and fill each day. You've got the Move ring, the Exercise ring and the Stand ring. You can set goals with these for yourself depending on what you want to aim for. The Activity app, if you scroll down, also tells you your steps for the day, distance travelled and floors climbed. There's also a variety of other graphs to see when you are active. Data from this app and any workouts you do is also mirrored to the Activity app on your iPhone. This means within your app you can see your whole day summarised and also check out your data from various workouts that you've done. These three rings and all the data in the Activity app is a really nice clear way of seeing your goals and setting other goals. Next let's talk about the Heart Rate app. The heart rate app on the watch lets you check your heart rate and also shows you your readings from throughout the day. By default, the Apple Watch doesn't do continuous heart rate monitoring like Fitbit devices, but it takes your heart rate every 10 minutes or so throughout the day. When you're doing an exercise, it does take it more often. This is great if you're running or doing weights at the gym and you want to track your heart rate throughout that workout. One thing I have found, however, is that the readings seem to be slightly higher than they were on the Fitbit that I was using. Now, I don't know which is more accurate without using a chest strap, but I think the Fitbit was probably the right one. The other thing worth noting is that I found getting readings is a little bit more difficult and particularly when doing outside runs I found that the heart rate doesn't always pick up. One thing I've tried to sort this out with some success is by making sure the strap is a little bit tighter when I'm running and that it's slightly further up my wrist. I have however found that when I've done kind of treadmill runs at the gym or lifted weights it seems to pick up my heart rate much easier. Thirdly let's talk about the workout app. The native workout app on the Apple Watch is actually really really good. It has a huge range of activities, things like indoor and outdoor runs, walks and cycles, cross trainer, rower, stair stepper, high intensity interval training, pool swim and open water swim, uh, plus an other mode that you can use if you want to track weights. The interface on each of these shows different information depending on your exercise, but actually I found that it showed plenty of information on your screen and you still have the time in the top right hand corner. When you're doing an outside activity, the GPS automatically kicks in. This means you can't see that it has kicked in, but when you come to map it to your phone, you can see that it's worked. One of the things I really like about this app is it gives you some really good summaries at the end of your workout. Of course, there's also a range of third-party apps for tracking exercise. If you're running, you've got apps like Strava and Nike Running Club. And actually, I tend to prefer the Apple Workout app for these runs because it displays more data on the screen. But mostly, it's down to personal preference. The other fitness app worth noting is an app called Gymaholic. Uh, Gymaholic is an app for your watch or your phone and it's great for kind of weights coaching from your wrist and it syncs activity. It also gives countdown and cooldown time between exercises. You can customise these workouts on your phone before you send them to your watch and add in weights and amount of sets and things that you want to do. There's a handful of built-in exercises on this app or for a subscription fee you can get even more. To be honest, I'm just going to stick with the free version. There's also another app that's got a watch app called Reps and Sets. In this you can set kind of workouts and exercises as well. The other really nice thing about using the Apple Watch to track fitness is that you can exit these apps and they will keep on tracking your fitness. 
This means if you want to check Instagram or set an alarm or something, whilst you're doing your exercise, you can do that and come back to the workout that you're doing. In using my Apple Watch for a variety of activities, kind of outdoor runs, treadmill runs, weights and things, i found that it's fairly accurate. The other feature that's really useful is the ability to track swims. Now because the Apple Watch is waterproof, as I said earlier, this means you can take it in the pool with you. The other thing you set up when you track your pool exercise is the length of your pool. This means you can track how many lengths you've swum. When you enter swim mode, it locks out your touchscreen. This means you can only control your watch using the buttons on the side. This lets you pause and finish workouts. When you're done doing an activity in the water, you turn the crown and it kind of makes a noise and ejects water from the side. This is slightly odd, but it works really well. If you're watching this video and thinking about replacing your Fitbit, then the other thing you want to know about is sleep tracking. Now, Apple still haven't done a kind of native app for sleep tracking on the watch. I think this is largely because their intention is that you charge your watch overnight especially when it has nightstand mode when you plug it in. However, if you're like me, you want to track to sleep and work throughout the night, so you just find time to charge it throughout the day. There are a variety of apps out there for sleep tracking, and it's worth reading around some of the different reviews to see which you can get. Some of those apps require you to save it or about to go to sleep, others pick it up automatically. I've gone for an app called AutoSleep, which just costs a few pounds, and it automatically picks up when you go to sleep. It then gives you some stats in the morning about your heart rate and whether you've been in deep sleep or light sleep and all that kind of thing. Some of these apps take a little bit of tweaking to get started in terms of sensitivity, but I found that they seem to work really well. Finally for a review, let's talk about some of the smart features to make this a smartwatch rather than a fitness wearable. Firstly, let's talk about apps. There's lots of apps you can get for your Apple Watch and you install these via your phone. This means if you want to have your to-do list on your wrist or control the lights in your house or boost your heating, you can do that from various apps you can add onto your watch. These apps are great for just catching up with things on the go. They're also really useful if you use things like to-do lists for shopping lists because you don't have to have your phone out around the supermarket. Built onto the watch, you've also got things like stopwatches and timers. You can also have your calendar and your email to check those things. It's also worth noting that there's an app for controlling your camera remotely. There's even an app for controlling a keynote presentation from your wrist. In addition to all of this, it's probably worth specifically mentioning Maps. The Maps app on the watch is really good for getting directions around a new place without having to walk around with your phone out. You can get turn-by-turn -turn directions on this or look at the map. The other nice feature on the watch is music. You can store music directly on the watch, which means you can play it from Bluetooth headphones that you paired with the device. In the future, we're also going to see Apple Music arrive on the watch. Music is really easy to add on to the watch just using the watch app on your phone. Next on smart features, we should talk about notifications. Essentially, any app that sends a notification to your iPhone can mirror that notification onto your watch. You can choose which apps actually send notifications through via the watch app on your phone, but this is a really useful feature to have. This also provides you with some level of interaction. Whilst apps like WhatsApp don't have an app on the watch yet, you can still reply to WhatsApp messages via push notifications. When you reply to messages from your wrist, there's a whole host of options. You can do this via Siri, there's some pre-programmed messages, you can send an emoji, or you can do a kind of scribble thing. When calls come through, you can either answer them or reject them. As I've already said, Siri gives you a range of options for voice control from your wrist. You can ask Siri to do a lot of the things you can ask him to do on your phone, and you can wake him by either pressing the digital ground twice, or by saying, hey Siri. This might cause a few issues if you've got a few devices with this set up. For example, I tend to find when I say that, my watch and my phone all burst into life. Finally, for smart features, let's talk about Apple Pay. I've been using Apple Pay on my phone since it first came out, and it's a really useful way of paying for things on the go. It's also a lot more simple than getting a card out of your wallet. Having Apple Pay on your wrist is even better. You activate this by pressing the button on the side twice, and then tapping your wrist against the contactless terminal. This means when you're in a shop, you often don't even need to get your phone from your pocket. This is certainly one of the features that I've appreciated the most on the Apple Watch, and I think it's a great thing to have on your wrist. If you're worried about security for this, then what you do is you set a pin on your Apple Watch when you set up Apple Pay. This means that when you first put your watch on, after charging it or taking it off for a shower, you have to put in a pin code so it knows that it's you. This means if someone was to steal your watch, they wouldn't be able to activate it without knowing that pin. All in all, the Apple Watch Series 3 is probably what the first generation of the Apple Watch should have been. It's a really good fitness tracker and it's also a really good smartwatch. It also has a ton of third-party apps that can really enhance your experience. The only two things that let it down really are things like the heart rate sensor not being as accurate as it could be, but also that battery life can be a little bit short. 
However, on battery life, including night wear, I can easily get a day and a half out of it, if not a little bit more, if I really want to push that battery. I hope you guys have found this video helpful. Do please like and subscribe. If you've got any other comments about using the Apple Watch as a fitness tracker, then stick them below and I will try my best to answer those or find out for you. And I'll see you guys again soon.